Today we're taking a look at another math kangaroo problem. This one's from 2012. So it's a little old, but uh, I think the concept's still pretty cool. So we'll take a look at it. Uh, so we're given a right triangle with sides of 8, 15, and 17. And then there's this semicircle that's inscribed inside, and it's got a radius of r. And uh, obviously the question is just asking us what, what is r, right? And uh, all three values of r are the same. They're just radiuses in that semicircle. And we're supposed to find the value of one of those r's. So how do you actually go about solving for this problem? There's a lot of ways you could do it. One way that uh, you could do it is by expanding this down, making it a full circle, you know, reflecting that across. So now I've got an inscribed circle inside an isosceles triangle, right, with a base of, a total base of 16, and then two congruent sides would be 17 each. And then you could use the formula A equals RS to find the radius of the circle inside. And in this formula, A is the area of the, uh, the total triangle, not just half a triangle because we're inscribing an entire circle inside. The radius would be uh, the radius of the circle, which is the same as the radius of the semicircle, and s is a semi-perimeter. So semi-perimeter being half of the perimeter of the uh, circumscribed triangle, which would be that 16, 17, 17 triangle. So let's go ahead and solve the problem using this method. The area of this total large triangle that we've created is 1 half times the base times the height. Oops, the height is not 17, it's 15 is equal to the radius times the semi-perimeter. So the perimeter is 16 plus 17 plus 17. And we want to find the semi-perimeter, so we divide that by 2. That is equal to 25. So we put that back in there. And so we get our final radius is equal to, this becomes, 8 times 15, uh, 120 divided by 25, or 4.8. So this is one way we could have solved the problem. Let's look at another method that we could have used to solve the problem that I think is roughly the same time, maybe a little faster, but uh, this is the way that I first thought of it. So we're taking a look at the inside semicircle, and we can see that it's tangent to the hypotenuse of the triangle, right? So it's a commonly known fact that uh, an inscribed, or sorry, that a circle that's tangent to a line is perpendicular to that line. So we know that this is a right angle, and this is also a right angle. They're both 90 degrees. And so what that means is that we can draw this line here. That's the main part of solving this problem. By doing that, we create two separate triangles. Uh, the first triangle is, I'm going to use a different color here. The first triangle is this one that I've shaded in, and we have a second triangle there that we've also created. So you can see in the green triangle, I'm going to switch back to orange. So you can see the green triangle has a base of 17 and an altitude right here, that's R. And we know that this triangle here, the red triangle, is also right because it includes a right angle and it has a base of r and a height of 8. So the solution here is to add the areas of the two triangles and set that equal to the area of the 8, 15, 17 triangle which is just 60. So let's get started with the method. Uh, so the area of the red part is 1 half times the base which is r times the height then we're going to add to that the area of the green triangle, which is 1 half times the base, which is 17. And the height is r. And you can tell that r is the height because it's perpendicular to that hypotenuse. And we know that this is equal to our total area, which is equal to 1 half times 8 times 15, or 60. Then solving this is pretty straightforward. It becomes 8r over 2 plus 17r over 2, or 25r over 2 is equal to 60. And yet again, we get r equals 120 over 25, which is 4.8. So I think both of these methods work great, and they're both really fast. Uh, this This area method with the red and green triangles is the one that I first thought of, but... 
Uh, I thought this was a really cool problem and you could have solved it in any number of ways, but having a planned out method is probably good for future problems like these.